Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. We are coming at you on uh, November 20th of 2020, uh, a few weeks after the election. A lot of craziness still going on, uncertainty, a little bit of uncertainty who won. I think most people are starting to get set on the idea that Biden has won. But um, anyways, uh, but Biden winning means that we have to start looking forward to what that actually means as far as a plan of where the country is going. But before we get into that, uh, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have uh, Tim Everett, our Screaming Eagle of Freedom. He is a pilot in the state of California. In our right-hand corner, we have Tim, the word Brathwaite. Last word. Leon, the word Brathwaite. Leon. Leon. Oh, excuse me, Leon, the word bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yes, sir. You better be careful. I could get offended by that. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, I, I get a lot of words, though, no matter what. <laughs> anyway, but it's, uh, yes, it's Leon, yes. the word bad. Yeah, word yeah Jay, Leon is prejudiced against uh, Irish and Irish names like Timothy. <laughs> yeah, why, why so much hate, Leon? <laughs> Just go with the flow. I'm, like, only, I'm, mean, only, I'm only prejudiced against the name when, I, when it does not belong to me. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. So that's, that's a type of prejudice because that's, you only like one name. Yeah, that's a that's very right. yeah. you don't like yeah. any other name. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm not, I, discri- I discriminate a lot in that regard, yes. <laughs> you are very narrow-minded, Leon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> one name out of the whole guy. Anyway. He's <laughs> our last word in Liberty, and he's a retired engineer from the state of California. Yes. <laughs> and my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today, um, you know, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> it's not much. Yes. Are, you, are you sure? Are you sure that's your name? Are you sure? Huh? Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, uh, w- the thing I wanted to, uh, the, the main topic we wanted to go over today is, is you know, uh, is sort of where we're headed in a uh, uh, four years of Biden. And he recently had a uh, press conference in what they call the Office of the President Elect, you know, which I'm not sure if that's a, a real thing, but you it's know, not real. It's, it's not, there's no such office. Okay. Not yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, he he and Kamala had a press conference, and they gave about a 15 minute speech together about what the uh, plan was going forward. So, it's sort of the Biden economic plan, I guess. And um, essentially the theme of it was that we can come out of this stronger than we went in. And there was, I'm going to kind of go through a list of topics and we're just going to kind of jump around throughout the show on, you know, maybe some of the issues with some of these topics. Um, And so to start with the, he mentioned that he had talked with uh, industrial leaders, uh, you know, before he came up with this plan and how they were all on board Well, those industrial leaders were, five CEOs of, of major companies and five union leaders. So right away you can tell, you know, what the, the bias of this is. I mean, and we can get into that in a little bit, but uh, then he talked about uh, mandatory masking going forward uh, in relation to COVID. He talked about um, <clears throat> getting the vaccines out to people fast. And it sounded like he was trying to take a lot of credit for that. And um, he also uh, talked about uh, funding states and localities that had been harmed by a lot of the government lockdown policy. Um, otherwise, kind of what we've heard of, uh, in other words, is state bailouts, you know. So that was one of the things he's for going forward. Talked about making the wealthy and corporations pay their fair share in taxes as we go forward. Uh, certainly, we've heard that cry uh, quite a bit in the past from Democrats. And then uh, he talked about weatherizing and retrofitting millions of homes and buildings. Uh, So that was another part of his plan. He talked about investing money in electric cars, uh, charging stations, and green tech. Uh, He he emphasized throughout the presentation creating union jobs. That ties back to that, you know, conversation with union leaders. Uh, Buy American was also a theme. 
raising and raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour throughout the country. So this was kind of, uh, you know, it's possible we may have missed something, but that's essentially the nuts and bolts of everything he was talking about in that conversation. And one funny thing was, too, as he wrapped up, he said, uh, <clears throat> you know, Refusal of Democrats and Republicans to cooperate with one another is not due to some mysterious force beyond our control. It's a conscious decision. It's a choice that we make. So he was trying to say that we need to go to, you know, we need to unify essentially behind him. <laughs> but, but yeah, you, you know, know, like, you mean like the Democrats unified behind Trump? Exactly. Yes. yes. I mean, I yes. think exactly. the choice of exactly. Nancy Pelosi tearing apart Trump's speech behind him as he gave his, you know, State of the Union speech. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, you know, this is, it's funny how unification only works when, you know, uh, you know, one person's side is in control. But anyways, this is uh, uh, the nuts and bolts of the speech. So, uh, you know, topics. Uh, uh, let's, I guess, get right at that. You know, the idea that his, this whole plan was made from a discussion of CEOs and union leaders. The CEOs, by the way, Microsoft, uh, Target, um, The Gap, and GM, and there was one other, I can't remember which one that was, but those were Essentially, the CEOs, the union leaders, were you know just the usual suspects of the biggest union. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the union, the usual violators. <laughs> you know, you know these, this, this, the, the one question that comes out of um, out of this so-called Biden plan is who's going to pay for all of this crap? Who? Who's going to pay for it? Now they want to bail out the states, okay? And really and truly, they want to bail out the blue states, New York, Illinois, California. Who have gotten themselves in all kind of trouble from all their nice, wonderful, especially the environmental things. How they're going to change? They're going to create utopia here in California, and utopia in Illinois, and utopia in New York. And now they're in trouble. Now they want the federal government to bail them out. So who's going to pay for all of this? And they always want to tell us about this fear share. What is that? What is what exactly is fear? The top the top one percent of, of 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 income tax earners of income earners pay about 30 to 40 percent of the income tax right now as we speak and that is not fair is what joe biden is trying to tell us now oh wow well let's home in on uh you know uh, a few topics so you mentioned their fair share and and so in california you know they certainly have uh, one of the highest tax rates in the country and yeah. a lot of people are currently leaving california you know and moving to other states we've talked with cal exeters on this program you know people who are essentially fleeing in u-hauls from the state uh, to preserve their wealth uh rich people as well uh, you know like gene simmons recently moved elon musk uh talking about moving uh, one of his uh plants and the uh oh gosh was it joe rogan uh, moved with his podcast ben shapiro yeah, is moving also yeah so there's a lot of people moving and you know it just sort of uh, th this whole thing of just tax 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 so you know it, it's fair share undefined just just say tax more uh, i don't know uh, what, what do you think about that tim well have you seen the prices of utopia these days utopia is way up there <laughs> and, and um yeah and well okay so so they um they bought they bought Utopia and it's it was a little higher price than they expected it to be and now now they're wondering how to pay for it and of course they can't because they can't print their own money but if they could believe me they would but they have the, money. the Actually, state that, just to interject that's the states that can't produce I'm talking the states exactly, yeah, they, yeah but the but um, fortunately for the states who don't have a reserve. Uh, uh, Federal Reserve to print their own money with, uh, they have the federal government. That's especially if they have uh, somebody that's in their same party in there to um, to give the the go ahead to more debt uh, to pay for their profligate spending. Uh, and so, yes, yes. Uh, you know that restraint on states uh has gone away and now they will suck on the big breast of the federal government uh not even the federal government but the federal government's uh central bank and will um therefore not have to worry about uh this profligate spending at all <clears throat> Yeah. And this whole this this whole nonsense about about 
raising raising the minimum wage to fifteen dollars. The minimum wage is one of the biggest job killers we have, probably the biggest job killers we have in the United States, especially for minority people in the United States. The minimum wage, we, you could go back and look at the history. When we had no minimum wage, black unemployment and white unemployment was almost equivalent to each other. But the day the minimum wage came in, you started to see the, the, the disparity. Right now, in some yeah. communities, youth unemployment, youth unemployment in some black communities and some Hispanic communities is up in 30, 40 percent. That kind of stuff. And then we just wonder why these people having nothing to do, they end up in, in difficult crime situations. And we wonder why. The minimum wage is, is the biggest job killer and the, one of the most damaging things we have in society right now. And look at what Joe Biden is talking about. He's going to raise it. He's going to make it nice and wonderful. Okay. And the other thing too, the other thing too, that is also destructive. If you see this buy American thing. Now, I don't have any problem with the United States producing wonderful products and we all want to buy it. Okay. But I must freely choose that. Okay, that's what I want, but I want to be freely able to choose that. I don't want some government telling me if I have a nice, wonderful product made in France or made in Canada, and that I cannot buy it because because I am an American citizen. I have to I have to buy something here in America that is of less quality. And Trump also has this policy also, okay, which I which I despise. I you guys know that I despise. So I don't want the government telling me what my choices should be when I spend my hard-earned dollars. This Buy America. Oh God, come on, please. Save that book. Save that nonsense, please. Yeah, to jump in on the minimum wage thing too as well. I mean, you know, we are in a, a situation where everybody has massively lost jobs in this country. I mean, we have right. loss of jobs and loss of businesses. And the last thing we want to do, because in the end, what a minimum wage is, is it's a barrier to employment. If two people want to come together and voluntarily engage in a work relationship with one another, and that happens to be at a lower rate than $15 an hour, then essentially the government is coming in and saying, no, you cannot engage in this relationship. That is essentially right. what a minimum wage is. So it is a barrier to jobs and employment, not a creator of jobs and employment. So essentially in this uh, atmosphere where lockdowns, the government has literally come down and killed many jobs with a lockdown policy where it gave people no choice in how to respond to COVID, just told us we have to lock down certain businesses to their you know, to their fatality, essentially. And and now we are putting a barrier in place. So I just, you know, the economic illiteracy, and, and I urge anybody who's watching this, just look up price floors and price ceilings online. Price controls, essentially, is what we're talking about here. And you can find out that almost every economist is against price controls. You know, you may find a few who, you know, kind of try and make exceptions for specific things yeah. or the other. Look up general price controls and you're going to find that it's a bad thing in economics. It leads to inefficiency and waste. Oh. Well, it, yeah, the minimum wage makes lower paying jobs illegal. So, yes. so you, okay, you, you want to make jobs illegal, uh, vote for Biden or, you know, support Biden's lunacy, his, his economic imbecility. And uh, yeah, no, Jason, I mean, you will not find any economist well unless he's complete <laughs> nutcase no i wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, say that to him. <laughs> i think krogman supports him anyone with that, that jacket oh god lord what's wrong with you today that um <laughs> that, that yeah. imbecile <laughs> yeah which, which imbecile is this economic krogman krogman yes krogman <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, our friend. yeah. 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 Sorry, I, I mispronounced his name. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, gosh, uh, I can't think of his first name. Is uh, well, anyway. Um, Paul, Paul, Paul. 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 Yes. Paul. Paul that's right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess. The, okay. All right. I stand corrected. Then. Yeah. You're right. Um, oh gosh. Yeah. It, it's. I, I don't know where to begin. I, you really have to be. This is the issue with uh, education, where you get no education in economics. So you have people that that buy into this thing as if there's no downside, no unintended consequences with, you know, with price controls essentially. And you know, it's just yeah. Every time it's including Nixon, a Republican. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, right. every, every time it's been done, it's just been. A disaster. Now, what they're, they're going to do is, we'll, we'll look, City A, like Seattle, for example, uh, 
a high rent district, okay, cost of living is really high there in Seattle, on the coast of a major port on the Pacific Rim. And it's got a totally distorted uh, economic base compared, uh, and not distorted for the wrong reasons, but it's a distorted economy because it's got such a high cost of living, right? Okay, so you're going to be able to raise the minimum wage there and not see as much of a downside as you would in, say, Alabama or in, um, I mean, you know, just Idaho, Utah, uh, you name it, um, in uh, Dallas and so on. Because the cost of living is already so high that the, the lowest wages are already naturally up there because they have to be or nobody would work. OK, nobody would be able to afford to live there and work. So you're so that, you know, people like to show off these uh, supposed successes of this uh, this raising of the minimum wage when it just ain't there. That's not why you didn't see a drop off in employment. It's because they were already being paid almost that or in some cases higher than that. higher than that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, not to mention that, but I mean, if you go and you look at, I believe it's Bureau of Labor Statistics, and you can look this up, you know, essentially, it is less than, I think it's, it's. Well, I know it's less than 5%. It may even be less than it's, 3 or 4%. It's two, it's, okay, yeah. yeah, you, you got to yeah, look at it a couple of different ways. Yeah. You can look at it. Okay, so there's, it's 2%, by the way. And it's, I think the 2% figure, and it, it may be even lower, but you take all people working, OK, you take people that are working for uh, a salary out of the equation. So you got wage earners and then you've got um, people that are uh, below a certain age group that are wage earners. OK, even in that statistic, it's really low. The number of people that make minimum wage that are paid minimum wage already. I can't remember. I haven't. I've looked at those stats in the past, but it's been a while, and they they may be a little bit different. But it's a, it's a low percentage. It's just yeah, yeah. it's and it's it, because people yeah. people start off. They're there for a little while, and then they get to do doing something, or they stay there and get skilled, and they get worth more, and so they get paid more than minimum wage. Well, and, and the, the point I was trying to make, too, about bringing that up is if such a tiny percent of the population is actually controlled by that, it really shows that the market does not require a minimum wage. The minimum wage, uh, you know, it, people who are making less than whatever that minimum should wage be that. Yeah, this exactly. Is, this, exactly. That yeah. should be the minimum wage. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. There are all be the kinds minimum. of reasons that people take jobs. I mean, you think about an internship. And somebody may be taking a job just to gain the skills to make more money later, right? And so, I mean, these are uh, and these are common practices. I mean, most college-educated people may take a a free, uh, an unpaid internship just oh, yeah. to gain yeah. some of these job skills that will get them a good job in the future. So that you know, it's it's really uh, silly, you know, to think that uh, you know that we need this, but. Uh, you know, it's just yeah, terrible. And then you think, too, about the uh, the big push in this for unionization of many jobs as well, which is part of the AB5, you know, thing that has gone on in California as well, trying to crack down on gig workers to make sure that they have constraints that will make them easier to unionize, essentially, in the future. And that's there's a big push as well nationally uh, by the Democrats to push that out. But, um, <clears throat> but these are all barriers to getting people back to work and getting people productive exactly. and you know it just you know and, and the reason by the way that most people are making more than minimum wage is because in the end what dictates what you get paid is based it is mostly your productivity you know it's not an edict by, by somebody yeah. so you know if, if if your productivity does not demand that then then you're you've essentially eliminated yourself from the possibility yeah. of employment if you know so, but you know, yeah, there's yeah. a there's a bigger there's a bigger adverse effect of, of, of the minimum wage that we probably haven't touched on. When you look at a high schooler who who might who might be having who will have to be paid the minimum wage, you know, there's a big intangible thing of getting up in the morning and re reporting to a job on time, and learning some of the things of interacting with people in a professional uh, well semi-professional environment. All these intangibles. 
all these intangibles are destroyed because you have a minimum wage and certain people cannot participate in these sort of skill learning activities because these intangibles are valuable down the road. They may not pay off right at this moment, but down the road they'll be valuable. And these are the skills that are not being learned by a whole swath of people because we have a minimum wage. They cannot find jobs to learn these skills about getting up in the morning, dressing dressing up you know, as, as best they can to appear for work, how they present themselves on the job, all these sort of things which are so valuable in terms of your success. These things are lost to a certain sec sector of the population because of this minimum wage. Well, you know, one other area I wanted to touch on, too, as well, since we talked about, but it has to do with, uh, you know, Biden wants a mandatory mask uh, uh, policy across the country. And I don't believe he currently has the authority to do that as an executive. I mean, when he does become president, he won't have the authority to do that. But he wants that, which is, uh, you know, I mean, you talk about invasive. I mean, the idea that you could actually tell everybody in every state that you have to wear masks and when, and especially when you hear some governors telling people you have to wear a mask in between bites at a meal you know where's right. that going you know <laughs> and and I mean, where does it end where does it end yes yeah. well i think the hypocrisy of some of this too i mean we've had debates in the past about say um you know state driver's license and maybe a muslim woman does not want to take her veil off for the picture and we've actually i believe made exceptions to that i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but i believe we've we've had debates about making exceptions for that and now we, we're going to tell everybody that you have to wear a mask and your liberty is completely unimportant. I, you know, to me, these, uh, it just, it, it, you know, it's the same crowd that's telling us that essentially, you know, that, that we had to respect the individual in that case where they, they wanted to wear a veil for a state driver's license, which is what you're using to identify somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and in this case, you, you know, they're telling us that, no, you know, if, if you, you know, aren't comfortable in a mask. Well, too bad. We're just going to mask everybody in the country. You know, I just, it. yeah, it's but, it's. But these people start off start off where Karl Marx where Karl Marx started. The ends justify the means. They don't care how they get to the, to their their power grabbing um, world. They will just want to make sure they get there. Once they get there, we'll have this utopia. So here we are where we are adults we cannot make our own choices we cannot decide what risk we're going to take to, to manage our own lives these people these utopians they think they can tell us the ends justify the means they think they can take away our liberties they think they can do whatever the hell they want as long as it gets to their ends not ours theirs they could destroy our livelihoods as long as it gets to their ends this is what is going on we have to stop this and we have to stop it soon Otherwise, we'll never have America that we hope for. Wow, yeah. What can well, I say? But, <laughs> say but I, want to, I, I want to add on, on, on the list. On the, Tim, Tim, are you finished? I'm sorry. Tim, are you finished? No, no, no. I, I don't know. I, I, nothing, nothing better than that, of course. Well, Other say it, man. Good. Come on, man. Come on. You never know. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Uh, well, I, you know, I, I was just going to agree with you. And um, yeah, it's it's not our utopia, it's their utopia, because we've seen in the, in the last show that, you know, they don't have to abide by the rules that they make. And so exactly what do they care exactly. if they have a they, they could have a mask mandate that we have to wear the mask sleeping, taking a yeah. shower or having yeah. sex, you know, that, <laughs> yes. you know we, we, yeah, so, uh, but with, they wouldn't have to abide by it, just us. I don't know how they're going to enforce that, especially the sex part. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I remember there was a there, there was a movie, The Naked Gun. I don't know if you guys saw that, but uh, uh, there was a scene where uh, the, Leslie Nielsen tells uh, Priscilla Presley, yes, uh, uh, or, or that, that he practices safe sex, and then they go into the next scene. And you see two people completely in these body condoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty, pretty darn safe. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, I think we've gotten to that point in our show where we try to our uh, knucklehead noise patrol, where we try and end off with something. Uh, just some insane noises coming out of uh, usually a politician oh, out there. And in this case, uh, we had uh, Trump 
talking about you know uh, removing some of the troops from Afghanistan and Iraq prior to his uh, you know uh, leaving office. And I mean, I'm not sure if he believes he's leaving office yet, but regardless, he, he said it the last doesn't, minute. He, yeah. he, he doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe yeah. it yet. No. But, but he's going to reduce the troop size in those countries by about half. Uh, you know, so he's not completely pulling out the troops, but he's he's pulling out around half of the troops in both those countries. And so Tammy Duckworth, uh, who I believe is a congresswoman uh, on the Democrat side, she said, we want our troops to come home, but let's not bring them home in body bags. That's potentially what's going to happen if this president gets his way and puts his own political timeline ahead of national security. Uh, so bring yeah, the troops Tammy, home. You're, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tammy's, mentally, yeah. Tammy's mentally retarded. Because uh, they've been coming home in body bags, and this the, these uh, numerous uh, fools' errands in the Middle East for uh, the last twenty years, and uh, and we're we're in this one in Afghanistan for twenty years now, and um, it's, it's uh, beyond ridiculous. And we've lost, and it's like news to Tammy, we've lost that war. Okay, we have lost ground, and and. Hey, who cares? No one had a strategy to begin with. And this is... This did, did, didn't didn't the, Obama say we're going to bring the troops home when he came into office? I thought that's what he did. He did. did. He did. I, All right. Exactly. And yeah. where are we now? Then he, you know, then he had... Right. Then, then somebody took him into the corner and uh, gave him a little lecture. And then he had the surge right after that. And 35,000 or so new troops went in there. Anyway, and guess what? You know, we still lost. So um, it is, uh, it's, it's just ludicrous that this person, I, I wish Trump would have done this in his first week of office. He should have pulled everybody out and said, good luck, you're on your own. And the Taliban would have taken over the rest of the country. They own most of it already. They control most of it. It's just this puppet dictator we put in place, to this idiot that's running things now, uh, supposedly, that's running a little limited area in Afghanistan uh, now. Um, it, it's, it's just ridiculous. And the, the WAPU rep report, I suppose everyone should be familiar with that, where they had all these uncovered, all these people lying to the American public about everything regarding Afghanistan and how uh, you know, th their their so-called victories were nothing but, and everything is just a complete sham and a disgraceful um, evidence of the power the military-industrial complex has over most of our leaders, in, and well, especially... Tim, in speaking of an endless stay there, I, uh, unfortunately, our show has to have an end. We can't go on forever like our military presence overseas. So, <laughs> so, so I have to call it there, but <laughs> Thank you all for joining uh, Libertarian Counterpoint podcast, and uh, well, you can catch more of our shows at libertariancounterpoint.com, and we hope to see you uh, in our future shows. Uh, thanks for joining us.